This morning, I, I'm going to be speaking on a, the subject of wisdom. Uh, this started out, you know, a lot of times God uses me in the word of knowledge, but I began to realize he pointed out to me, he took me in the, the Passion Translation to the 1 Corinthians chapter 4, or chapter 12, I mean, where it says, to one is given the word of wisdom. And in the Passion Translation, it has a footnote. It's, it, it's, the, it's speaking strategies. Wisdom gives strategies and insights. And it's, it's more than just a fragment of knowledge, but actually wisdom is something that imparts something to someone that can bring them to a strategy, okay? And I've, as I've been meditating and thinking about that for two or three weeks, last Sunday... Uh, as Henry was ending his message, I have, you know, I write notes sometimes and I, you know, I have them in my Bible and I, I go look at them every once in a while and I say, hmm. But as I open this up, it was wisdom from God. Listen to this. Wisdom from God will always bring a supernatural upgrade. And that there was, there was a time when some of you know Rich Scovel and he was in the hospital and they were messing around with him saying, well, they weren't giving him what he needed. And uh, we were there with Janice and Skip and Janice just out of the, from her spirit, she just spoke this up. In Jesus name, we command supernatural upgrade to come for Rich right now. And within five minutes, they came out and said, we've got this done, this done, this done, this done, this done. Because God gave her a word of wisdom that brought a strategy that brought to what he needed to have. Amen? So if that things that, you know, that when God gives wisdom, if you'll go over there in, uh, you don't have to turn there, but in Proverbs chapter 1, the word Proverbs literally means it's not just pithy statements. It's just not good stories. It's not parables. It is God's wisdom to us. I've read through the book of Proverbs many times, and there's been times I'll go over and read them again because it covers everything in our existence. And what it does is to give us wisdom that we never are stuck. You know what an upgrade is? Does anybody know? Yes. You ever, you be on, you're on an airplane. And the, the stewardess comes and says, sir, ma'am, you just got upgraded to first class from coach. No extra charge. That's upgrade, isn't it? Anybody ever flown, gone first class or gone into coach? Big difference, isn't there? So the wisdom of God will bring a supernatural upgrade to see and do everything anything from God's perspective, because not only will that upgrade take place, it comes because God has shown you his perspective. Remember Henry talking about proclaiming the Lord's death till he comes? When Jesus was talking to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, he was retelling the story and it changed their perspective. It changed how they looked at everything. It changed their action. They immediately went back to Jerusalem. And while they were talking to the 11, that Jesus appeared to them, about scared them out of their wits. But he said, don't be afraid. Be at peace. Peace unto you. I'm alive. I was dead. And now I'm coming to give you an upgrade. Amen. I hope this blesses you as much as this blessed me. I tell you what, because I need wisdom. You need wisdom, right? Then you come across things that I don't know what to do, but I'm not stuck there. I know that I can turn to God and get wisdom. God always leads in the best and the highest means and ways. He's always, you remember he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. But we can get religious and say, yeah, like in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, you know, eyes not seen, nor ear heard, nor to enter the heart of things, man of the things that God's prepared them, but God's revealed them by his spirit. And then you'll hear someone religiously say, well, you never know what God's going to do. Yes, never know. But did you read the next verse? God has revealed to us 
by his spirit, the things that are freely given to us by God. Amen? So if God's given something out, I want to take it. I want to receive it, right? So over, look at this. Over here in, uh, this is in Proverbs chapter 2. I want to read these first few verses. It says, my son, if you receive my words and treasure my commandments within you. Look what it says. So you incline your ear to wisdom, to incline and apply your heart to understanding. Dan just said that, you know, if you've got heart, God can do a lot with you, even if you don't know some things. He knows how to navigate around things in life. Then he'll teach you, this is how you do this. This is how I see it happening, right? If you'll apply. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and you lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures. Remember that, that scripture said, Jesus, it's like the, uh, the kingdom of God is like a, a man that, that finds a treasure in a field. He goes and he hides it. And he sells everything he has and goes and buys that field. Guess what he got? He not only got the land, he got the treasure, right? He was smart enough to tell everybody. He didn't tell anybody that he found a treasure, right? Some people get so excited. I found a treasure. Well, it belongs to me. It's my land. But when he bought it, it became his, right? It's ownership. So if we seek for, for hidden treasures, if you will, un, you will understand the fear of the Lord and you will find the knowledge of God. Boy, look at this. The Lord gives wisdom. Oh, sorry. The Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of justice and he preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and judgment, equity at every good path. When and wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to you, discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you to what? To deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things. That's a, lot to, that's, that's a lot of good things, right? That's the good and perfect gift that comes down from the Father. There's no verminous, no shadow of turning. But look at that. I want you to go back there in verse 4. I want to I'll just point out some. This is a little side note, but uh, it's, it's worth talking about. In, uh, in Isaiah, I just saw this the other day. It says, where it says, seek her as silver. In Isaiah, it says in Isaiah 55, 6, it says, seek the Lord because he makes himself approachable. That word seek in the Hebrew, and I looked it up to, to verify this, but it literally means the idea of visiting frequently more than trying to find something. Okay. That means a habit of, I'm going to spend time with God. I'm going to make it my habit of hearing what he has to say about anything. I don't assume I know what to do. I don't assume how to know how to pray even. But I got the Holy Spirit who takes hold together with me and helps me to pray. Even when I'm weak, I don't feel like I'm strong. He's, his strength comes forth, helps us to pray according to the will of God. That word seek there is that I'm going to God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. What? In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths, right? So there's something about seeking the Lord that Wisdom from God is more valuable than silver. It's more valuable than gold. Go with me to uh, Proverbs 4, where it says there, and I want you to point out, I want to point something out. In the, the first word in that chapter, you don't have to turn there, go there, but it's the word here, H-E-A-R. Jesus said, the word you hear and give attention to 
is the measure that's going to come to you. The measure of thought and study you give to what you hear will be the measure that comes back to you. Amen? So there's something about hearing, and we read there in chapter 2, if you'll incline your ear to hear, but look at verses 5 to 9. It says, get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, for she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. What does it say? Wisdom is the what? Principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. In all you're getting, get understanding. And then it says, exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you to honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory. She will deliver you. Some translations bring the point out that, that, or, that crown of glory is the wraparound presence of God, his glory. That's, what, that's when Adam and Eve were created they were wrapped in the glory of God. They were clothed. They didn't need clothing because the glory of God clothed them. Guess what's been restored to us? Jesus said, Father, thank you that the glory you gave to me, I have given to them. We are clothed in the glory of God. Amen? That's what that means there. <clears throat> now, the reason I brought that point of about hearing over in John 10... While she's going there, in, in one of the Psalms, it says, I will listen and hear what the Lord will say to me. The Lord will speak peace to his people. But it's an interesting phrase he uses after that. Let them not again turn to folly. Because if you turn to folly, you're looking at from the wisdom of the world. And the wisdom of the world is foolishness to God. And the wisdom of God is foolishness to the world right? So don't turn to the wisdom of the world. Don't let people cheat you through philosophy, vain imagination, traditions of men and elementary things of the world. We've got a higher wisdom to draw from. It's God's wisdom, right? In John 10, look at this. I woke up the other morning and I was thinking about this hearing wisdom. And the Holy Spirit brought and reminded me, he says, this is where it connects together. Look at this. In verse 4, it says, and when he, Jesus is our shepherd, isn't he? When he goes, he, he said he brings out his own sheep. He goes before them and the sheep follow him. What does it say there? For they know what? His voice. What does his voice sound like? We just read that. The Lord gives wisdom out of his mouth comes wisdom. So what you're hearing is God's wisdom to you because we're his sheep. We should be hearing what wisdom he has for us. Do I hear an amen out there? Are you guys awake or there? Are you contemplating? Anyway, sorry, I'm not rebuking you. Yeah, I am. Yet they will by no means. No, I'm not rebuking. You. I'm sorry. Yet they will buy. Now, what does it do? Because you're his sheep and you know his voice. What's the next verse? Yet they will by no means follow a stranger. Why? For they will flee for him, from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Well, I don't know if this is God or the holy, if this is the devil. It says you know the truth and shall assure your hearts before him. And you've been given the Holy Spirit because it, you'll know the difference between truth and error. When you hear the voice of the good shepherd, you will know when the devil comes and speaks to you. But if you're not paying attention, there's a thin line between the devil and God sometimes. You know what I'm saying? But there's some things that you can do to check, is this from God? Amen. We're going to look at those in a minute. But over in verse 27, if you'll go there, it says, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. He knows us. 
We know his voice. We know him. And they follow me. And what's the result? Thou give them eternal life and they'll never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Here's a distinction you can always go by. Jesus is always giving. The devil's always trying to take. The thief cometh not what? To steal, kill, and destroy. I am come that you might have life and life more abundantly. That's a good way to, rem- to know who's speaking. Oh, glory to God. There are, and I want to look at three examples in the Old Testament of wisdom operating in 2 Chronicles 1.10. You remember David had Pat died and Solomon was made king and he had sacrificed thousands of whatever it was, a lot of oxen and a lot of sheep. And it was like, like Gina read that it's a sweet savior to the Lord. God was pleased with his offering. But what he did, he goes, God said to him, what do you need, Solomon? He could have asked for anything, right? But he says, and this doesn't say it here, but in another, another book, it says that I'm a, child, I'm a young person. I, I, I don't know how to lead these people. But he said, give me wisdom. Give me understanding. Give me wisdom and give me an understanding heart to judge this people. And what did God say? Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and before this people. For you, who can judge this great people of yours. And God said, because this was in your heart, you've not asked riches or wealth. He said, I'm going to give that to you. I'm going to give you long life. And because you ask wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people since I made you king. Good thing, right? Solomon asked for wisdom. He received wisdom and understanding to rule over his kingdom. Now, there's something I want to just Put this in there. Solomon had everything. You know, when they start piling silver in the streets and don't even count it anymore, it's gold, baby. It's a gold standard. Everything's gold. But you know what what happened to Solomon? He compromised to get what he already had. He, he left wisdom. He left an understanding heart because he started taking, how many wives did he have? 300 wives and 700 concubines. Dear Lord, I said one wife's enough. You know, I don't believe in polygamy. I, I couldn't handle more than two, one. And I got a great wife, I tell you what. Take that right, would you? Some of these guys, yeah, I like to be polygamous. You know, you know you don't. Oh, move on. But he compromised to get what he had. And what it do? He everything that he had. He died a young, he didn't die very, he was only in his 60s, early 60s. And the kingdom was torn away, but divided. So remember, God has given us everything. He's given you wisdom to know how to handle everything you've got. And guess what? When you compromise trying to help God out, it'll slip from your hands like oil like a grease pig, you know, it's like, it just gets away from you. Try to wrestle one, it doesn't work. Then in Genesis 41, 39, this is a story about Joseph. How many of you know Joseph wasn't very wise at 17? Because he had dreams. He dreamed that he saw the, the moon, the stars bow down before him. And he saw these wheat, sheaves of wheat, there was, a, there was a 12 of them. His father, he was telling, he said they all bowed down to him. Well, that really made him, them love him more, right? <laughs> you snot-nosed kid, you think you're just so special. And then dad gives you that coat of many colors. You're his favorite. 
But what did he do? By the time he was 30, he had been through a few experiences. He had been through boot camp and had some training going on. He got some wisdom. But in all of that, remember, everything he did and everything he touched was blessed. Remember when Potiphar, he turned everything over to Joseph. He was running his house. He didn't even think about it anymore. He paid the bills. He did everything. But he was lied about, and so he got in where he ended up in prison. But in prison, he began to excel. Everywhere he went, the cream always rises to the top. God opened doors for him. His, who he was, his identity, his destiny came forth. But he always had wisdom. He always did it by the Spirit of God. If you think you can do it in your own ability, you're mistaken. It comes by the Spirit of God and the wisdom of God, right? And so he recognized that. So he interpreted the baker and the butlers. Do you remember that? And then, he, then, the, then this, the, the thing that he interpreted, the dream, it came to pass. The butler, you know, the baker rather gone, and the butler got restored to his position. And he went two years, forgot that, you know, and then all of a sudden the king, the pharaoh had a dream, and then all of a sudden he goes, oh, forgive me. I just remember a man gave me a dream, and he told pharaoh the dream. Because the, the, the dream that pharaoh had was there was going to be seven healthy cows came out of the river, and then seven skinny, gaunt cows came out of the river. And so he said, what's this dream mean? And so he, the, man, the, the, the butler said, oh, I remember Joseph. He, interpret, he can interpret dreams. And so they said, bring him up. He said he shaved and changed his clothes. He came before Pharaoh and he said, Pharaoh says, I know that you have the Holy the Spirit of God in you and that you have the wisdom of God. Now, tell me the dream. There wasn't time to go seek the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? It says, be instant in season, out of season. Remember what Jesus said, if you're called before the magistrate, don't think about what you're going to say. The Holy Spirit will tell you what you need to know. When you have put the word into your heart, God will have something to draw out of. It's like sowing seed. You're going to reap a harvest, right? You're going to have something that, you, that the Holy Spirit can say, here, say this. And that's what Joseph did. Hey, guess what? If you, these seven cows, is, the healthy cows, are seven years of blessing. There's going to be bumper crops. Take 20% of everything that comes in, build granaries, put it away, and because you're, there's going to come time of famine. And guess what? You're going to have more than enough. I'm going to tell you what. Because of the strategies that God gave to Joseph, Pharaoh took those strategies and, and was enriched in the time of famine. When everybody else was barely making it, remember Isaac and he so in the land in the time of famine, it says that God said, stay in the land of Gerar. Don't go down to Egypt. Don't go down to what looks like the place to go. Stay here. And he said he sowed in the land and he reaped a hundredfold that year. And he said he began to prosper and he continued to prosper, and he became very prosperous that the Philistines envied him. They got mad at him, so they started stopping him as wells. He'd go dig another well and had more water. He, then they plugged that up. He'd go over and do another one. He wasn't stopped because of the blessing of the Lord, because he followed God's instructions. The wisdom of God is to hear what God has to say and stay with what he said. Amen? And then it says, look over here in Daniel. Look at Daniel, Daniel chapter 5. It's in the Amplified. I want to read that. It said, verse 14, it says, this is Belshazzar telling uh, after he saw the handwriting on the wall and Daniel came in, same situation. Tell me what this means. I don't, you know, he didn't have time to seek the Lord, did he? But Daniel had a habit of, you know what got him in a throne in the den of lions? He had a habit of going before the Lord, seeking the Lord. He listened to what God had to say, and he had something to say. But why does a king say to him, I have heard of you that the spirit of the holy God is in you and that light understanding and what? Superior wisdom 
is found in you. Excellent wisdom, the top-notch wisdom. And then go down to where it just says, verse uh, 16, I've heard of you that you can make interpretations and what? Solve knotty problems. Now you can read the writing and make known to me. Did you see that? You read the writing and make the interpretation. All the wise men couldn't give it. Okay, here's what it's, you'll be clothed. And he said, but I, you can read. It says that you can interpret dreams and you can solve naughty problems. You can solve riddles. I've given you, you've been given by God the ability with the wisdom, that superior wisdom of God. How about you being said, it's said of you. Wow, look at that person. Everything they touch turns to gold. Everything they touch is blessed. You've heard Justin talk about the, the business, that everything, because he's entered the rest, every car, good, good work. I'm not talking about junk work that you have to spend 15 hours and you get paid 25 cents an hour. That's not blessing, is it? But it's like all those cars are in the rest of God that has been given to you from the foundation of the world. Everyone here, I'm, I'm going to get into where, you know, you can hear about, we've read about Solomon, we've read about Joseph, we've read about Daniel. But how many of you know this wisdom for work for you? It's designed to be practical. We've spirit, Joseph Prince said something, I was listening, Gino was playing an excerpt, and he said, the wisdom of God comes in two forms. It comes in the spirit and in the natural. The spirit will dictate and direct to the natural. Everything starts with your spirit first. Wisdom comes from God who lives in us, who's been made, Jesus made unto us wisdom. So guess what? So look at this. Joseph and Daniel had the leader say that they had the spirit of God in, in them. Both received strategies and insights supernaturally to do something natural. Well, you know, well, I'm getting out of politics because, you know, that those people are just so evil. We, we, the church, need to get out and stay out of politics. Guess what the mess we're in now? Because the church abdicated their role. Our role is in to, to influence society, to change culture with, with the kingdom of God. We're to bring forth and enforce the kingdom of God in the earth. We are God's ambassadors. We have been filled with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. To, and we've been given the spirit of God. We've been given authority to declare into the earth and to change culture. And that's what De Joseph and Daniel did. And Solomon started out. He influenced Israel. Del he, he, they started supernaturally. And it says, deliver an interpretation of a dream and give strategy to save from. That's what Joseph did. He saved from future famine. What God told him to do. Save the world from famine. But here's one thing even greater. Because Pharaoh was enriched in the time of famine because strategies were given to Joseph. And then also, it saved Jacob and future generations. God said, I will preserve a posterity. The lineage of Jesus came through Jacob. God kept him alive in famine. Because of the wisdom of God that God gave, the strategies given to Joseph. How many of you know that the wisdom of God, when you walk in it, it'll not only make a path for you, but it's going to make a path for those coming behind you. Wisdom has to become practical. It has to be able to work and be applied in everyone's everyday life. Supernatural wisdom to accomplish something than to do work and have the ability to be creative with skill and being excellent 
and what we do, we put our hand to. We're going to go to Exodus 31, but I, I, right now I want to just, I want to read to you what the Hebrew for wisdom and the Greek, there's some, of them, there's some different, some similarities in them, but in the Hebrew, the word wisdom is, means wisdom, skill, experience, and shrewdness. That's the Hebrew meaning. The Greek meaning is the word Sophia. It is wise, wisdom, it's skill, it's tact, T-A-C-T, it's expertise in any art. It refers to wisdom as skill in the affairs of life, practical wisdom, wise management as shown in forming the best plans and selecting the best means, including the idea of sound judgment and good sense. Now, did you get that? Choosing the best means. How many of you know there's a better way to do something and it's God's way? He'll let you, you can struggle all you want to. Justin says, I'm going to put a big sign out there at the entrance of my subdivision, Integrity Automotive. He didn't have to do that. God's, God took care of that, didn't he? Wherever you are, wherever you work, you have the wisdom of God. It will work for you practically. Because, you know, James says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. He gives liberally to all men. He doesn't upbraid you. But look at the, the passion says this this way. If anyone longs to be wise, ask God for wisdom and he will give it. He won't see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you over your failures, but he will overwhelm your fa failures with his generous grace. Amen? He's going to overwhelm you with it. Literally, it means his grace is with his open hand. You know, I grew up, when I was growing up, here's an all-seeing eye watching you. God's watching you. He's, he sees you. Don't be a bad boy because God's going to see you. I remember being a little boy in my bed. I was laying in the bed and I saw this one eye looking at me. If I make a mistake, don't move. And I pulled it, you know, smart thing. I pulled the cover over my head like God couldn't see me. That's going to make a difference, right? But something about that, when I realized, like we heard saying this morning, what the word that Karen gave was, God loves us and he wants to just, you know, he's, he loves us the way we are, but he's not willing to leave us there. He's got a better you. He's got the best you. And all we have to do is just receive it from his open hand, right? In Exodus, look at this. It has to be, it's creative, but look at this. You remember when they were going to build the tabernacle? The Lord said to Moses, saying, I have called by name Bezaleel, the son of Uri, the son of her. Okay, go on. I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom. Look at this. In wisdom and understanding. What did it sound like? Didn't it sound like Joseph and uh, Daniel? I have filled them with the, whole, the Spirit of God in wisdom, understanding. Look at this, in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. To design artistic works, to work in gold, silver, bronze, cutting jewels for setting in, carving wood, in all manner of workmanship. And see, did you see that? Now, was he in the ministry? Do you see that? So wherever you are on your job, you can expect the wisdom of God that will bring generous favor to you. And I, I heard Joseph Prince say this in one another excerpt. He said, instead of asking for the job, ask for the position. Amen? Well, I don't qualify. I didn't go to school for that. Ask for the position. God can give you wisdom as you go. How many of you know that when I spent two years at tech school learning the entrance to printing 
It took me 35 years to figure out a lot of that stuff. Now, I'm not a slow learner, but I'm going to tell you, along the way, there was times that I, something wasn't working right. I would shut the press down. I'd walk down the hall a second. And on my way back, the Holy Spirit said, here's your problem right here. Now, God, can it be that simple? Yeah. And you can have that, that you can just, and if the boss gets mad at you for going down the hall, just stop for a moment and just inside yourself. Sit here, I can hear God here. There's, I'm not confused. I know what, and I hear what he says, and it changes everything, doesn't it? This man, I want to I throw this in here right now. How many of you know that there's only 3% of the body of Christ that's in what we call full-time ministry? Where's the other 97% going to be operating in? On your job? You can be a witness. You can, hear, you can hear God on your job. You can hear God. You can be a powerful man and woman of God because God gives you wisdom to do it. He gives you grace to do it. You know, I remember back in the 80s, someone, one man of God called it a, a, the hurry up and get in the ministry. Everybody wanted to get in the ministry because praise God, I'm going to become famous. I'm going to write a book and I'm going to get rich. I didn't write a book, and though for I didn't get rich off of my royalties. But, but believe me, following God and what he told me to do is far more prosperous than doing that. Amen? A lot of people got in a ministry that should have never gotten a ministry. They were called a business. They were called a polit politic. They were called education. They were called to media. Now God's having to shake the mountains and get the dirt out of there, and he's putting people back on the mountains to be in, to rule on their mountain. Ephesians 5.17 says, it says, do not be unwise, but understand what the word, will of the Lord is. If you want to walk in wisdom, you're going to find out the wisdom is going to reveal the will of God to you. Right? Because God, the will of God will be made known. The will of God made known brings wisdom and directs our lives. To establish the kingdom of God through us. To demonstrate the power and wisdom of God. And that's why we can ask for wisdom. What I need to know, God's willing to give to me. He's willing to give to you. How many of you need, you know, there's times you, you just, it looks like an opportunity to be stuck. Anybody ever been in that place? I raise both hands. But you know what? I'm not stuck. You're not stuck. Because God's always got a strategy. Over in James 3. Now, James 3, verses 13 it shows us the this contrast between earthly wisdom, wisdom from below, and, and wisdom from above. But I want to read there the point I want, to, I want to point out, particularly verse 13. Who is a wise and understanding, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct. Now that word just literally means manner of life. That's your conversation, who you are day to day. Let him show out of your manner of life that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. You know that word meekness means the humility. Remember Henry talking about that, that one way to get receive grace is through humility. God, I don't know what to do, but my eyes on you, and I'm asking for wisdom, and I'm asking for grace to do what I need to do. He'll give you liberally. Amen? It, the manner, it shows us the difference between lower and, and, and wis, uh, from wisdom from God above and the difference between that lower wisdom and God above. Sophia wisdom is designed to supernaturally upgrade to anoint you with practical understanding and skill in whatever you put 
your hand to do. We, and you know what it does? We are blessed. Like Ab- God told Abram, I will, make, I will bless you to make you a blessing. Gina has been talking about seed time and harvest while the earth remains. God blessed you so you could be a blessing to others. And I'm going to tell you what, you can never outdo God. You got a big old caterpillar. When you, when you go and take a shovel and you, you sow a shovel full of wood and you, God comes behind with that big old earth mover and his scoop's a whole lot bigger. Amen? When you start thinking about, you see yourself blessed. You see God shows you what does blessed look like. Amen? What does God, remember I asked at the beginning, what does Jesus' voice sound like? It sounds like wisdom. It sounds like grace. There are several prayers that, you know, I, two or three years ago, the Holy Spirit told me to start praying these prayers for myself and for my family and for Gateway. And most of the time I do pray those, but it's in Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. I pray that God would give you the spirit of wisdom, revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, literally that means the eyes of your heart being flooded with light, that you know the hope of his calling. What is, what is the hope of your calling? Now, that's not necessarily meaning just in the ministry, the fivefold. That means your ministry, you're called to serve on your job. You serve with distinction and with wisdom, with understanding and revelation knowledge. Boss comes by and said, you know, there was a, he says, I don't, I don't, I, this, what's going on? And we, we don't understand. We've got the best teams on this and we just can't figure out what, remember, there was a guy back a story about when the airplanes wanted to lighten the air, they wanted to, you know, lighten the weight on airplanes. And so they started looking for ways to create strong ball bearings to go into the plane where they were needed. And they had teams of engineers. They spent a while, months on that. One guy said, you know, he came in one day, he, he was praying about that, he knew about that, and he came in and, and God gave him a dream or a vision. He saw exactly how to do that. So from that point on, every airplane, after they, they were able to do the design and they create creativity, it says every plane that took off, he got a royalty on because they had to buy his patent ball bearings. Colossians 1.9, we're going to close with this. For this reason also, we since the day we heard it, we do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in how? In all wisdom, spiritual understanding, so that you can walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. In all wisdom, so that you can walk in a manner pleasing to the Lord. Being fruitful. Father, thank you today that if we do lack wisdom, we can ask. And you give a supernatural upgrade in whatever area of life that anyone here is walking in and operating in. They, the wisdom of God will cause your glory to be surrounding them. And people will say, what is that light on you? And you can say, it's Jesus. Made unto me wisdom. And we thank you, Father, that we receive that grace of wisdom. And we give you thanks 
for that now. In Jesus' name.